Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Canadian immigration is for young people. If your age is above 30, then the chances decrease every year. Okay. And if, if your age is 30, 31, and you don't have a master's degree and you don't have a CLB 10, then your chances are decreased. Okay. Unless you have the golden profile for the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program because that is a genuine PNP program that has their own point grid and if you have that then you can get yourself selected through SINP. But if you don't have 10 years of work experience in a single NOC for example then uh, OINP and especially FSW are your only options. OINP is also ruled out if, you, if your NOC code is not in demand. Okay, If your NOC code is teacher, doctor, um, pharmacist, uh, or th these kind of uh, professional knock codes, then uh, PNPs are not for you. Okay, so the only option is FSW. So at the age of 35, because this is what the video is about, because I received um, a PNP nomination from Ontario at the age of 33. Okay, so at 33, you can get PNP nomination, but after the age of 35, uh, uh, until the age of 44, because 25% of my audience who watch uh, my videos on a daily basis are between the age bracket of 35 to 44. And this video is for that 25% segment of my viewership. Okay, because you guys have been watching my videos and if I don't talk about you guys, then this will be unjust and unfair to you guys. Okay, so I've already made a video where I've talked about how you can make your mark for Saskatchewan because after the age of 35, the only uh, genuine realistic PMP program is Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program. I would try to leave the link in the description, okay? But I will not go into those details in this video, okay? Another chance for you could be Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program. If you create your expressivity profile and if you're lucky, uh, then Alberta can select you. There is a valid chance like somebody from my village with a 391 CRS got uh, herself selected for Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program. So it is actually out there, but the chances are next to none. Like 183,000 people are in the pool and everybody is eyeing or hoping for Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program. So I wouldn't like ask you guys to live a false dream. So what you can do is First, if you have the finances, you can go to Canada on a study permit or you can send your spouse on a study permit and go there on a work permit and then you guys can make your way to uh, Canadian PR later on after achieving the required CRS or the required eligibility criteria. Okay? So studying in Canada is one option. Studying in your country will not help you because you will not have enough points. Okay, so another option for you is learn French. People can learn French in one year, in two years. So between one year and two years is a safe time to learn French. Okay, if you're 41 years old, uh, then you're, you are 11 years older than the ideal candidate. And 11 years mean 55 CRS points will be lesser uh, than the ideal candidate and f learning French CLB 7 could get you 72 CRS points. So, so after learning CLB 7 of French, you will be above the um, ideal candidate of 29 years of age at the age of 41 years old. So like you can do this path and French is a lesser expensive option than obviously going for a Canadian study. And with that being said, uh, getting a study permit after the age of 35 is also very risky. There are chances that your application will be refused and you will not receive a PPR. Okay, uh, but there are exceptions. People have received study permits. So this is a valid option for you. The third uh, point that I want to make in this video is that uh, your age is gone, but if your spouse is younger, uh, then try to improve their situation and make them the primary applicant so that your chances are uh, valid for, for express entry profile selection, okay? And the fourth option that I want to discuss in this video for the, for the guys who are between the age bracket of 35 to 44, okay? The fourth option for you guys is that talk to your employer if uh, 
uh, you are working in a multinational company who has their offices in Canada or get a job in your local home country in, 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 in that company who has an office in Canada and get uh, a transfer uh, through your company this is a viable option for many people because at the age of 35 to 44 you would be a seasoned professional working in a big company so you can avail that option the fifth uh, option for you guys would be to apply through linkedin through indeed uh, and reach out to those employers personally and make a connection and uh, based on that connection get a job offer or if you uh, live in a in a country that is eligible for the working holiday visa then go to canada on a working holiday visa okay for example if you are in england then you can go to canada on a working holiday visa okay so there is a list of countries so if you're in one of those countries then you can do that okay and uh, another option uh, relevant option would be if you are in a country that does not require a visa for visiting uh, canada for example if you if you are in south korea then you can uh, get an electronic visit visa and visit canada and uh, meet employers there um, try to get a job and that employer could uh, then sponsor you uh, for, a, for through a work permit okay so this is another option but um, i don't recommend you paying somebody to get a job offer okay so seventh option for you would be uh, to find your relatives in canada okay connect with them because your relatives are the one who can uh, sponsor you quite easily for example if your cousin is in ontario okay and we know that cousin in ontario don't mean anything uh, for the expression to profile so what you can do is if the connection is very strong if the family bonding is very strong then just request your cousin to move to saskatchewan okay ask your cousin to move to saskatchewan start a life there okay and after one year, uh, you would be able to go there because Saskatchewan really prefers people with connection. And if you have a relative in Saskatchewan, you will be getting 20 points, which are more than enough, more than what's required. So you can request uh, some family member to move to Saskatchewan and it will help you a lot. Uh, or they can move to Manitoba. They will uh, they give you 200 points on the Manitoba grid. So like this is. Uh, not really a valid option and I'm, I'm not sure if I should be saying it on you to you but it depends on your relationship with your cousin if it depends on your relationship with your uncle with your auntie okay so if they can move their province and live there for a year then the chances are that you would be getting yourself selected so this is like we're talking about last resorts right in this video uh, and and the legitimate way is because I don't want you to pay somebody uh, to, 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 to get you a job offer, to get you an LMIA. I don't want you to do that. Please don't do that. Okay. But uh, this is something you can do, like motivate your cousin to move to a province that uh, will help you gain your PR. And the eighth option is obviously if, if you are wealthy, uh, then you can go there on an investor visa because many provinces have those investor visas that are still uh, working. And uh, if, if you have that kind of a net worth, then uh, you can go there on an investor visa as well. Okay. And another thing, if you are unmarried, uh, then uh, your spouse or your uh, common law partner, if he or she is Canadian, then they can get you uh, they can help you get Canadian PR um, uh, in the later stages of your life. OK, so if that is an option, then you can avail that. Okay. But if you start thinking about the U Yukon community program, if you start thinking about the Atlantic Immigrant Nominee Program, if you think about uh, the uh, Rural Northern Immigration Pilot or sorry, AIP is Atlantic Immigration Pilot. So if you start thinking about these programs, you're not going to go anywhere. Mm, I mean, these are for the people living there. These, are, these, uh, these programs are for the people who are working there, who are studying there, who have a strong connection there. This is not for the outsiders. OK, so don't, don't fall for those. Facebook ads that you see that CLB4, farm workers required, dishwasher required, no oils, no limian. Well, I mean, don't fall for that. Okay, so the 10th option, the last option. This is not 
the last option uh, this is not the 10th option for canadian pr this this is something that is i don't know if i should be saying it if you cannot avail any of these options and you cannot think of a way to uh, get yourself a canadian pr then thing is uh, drop the idea canadian immigration is not for everyone i mean if uh, i did not receive a pnp nomination from um, uh, ontario then i was thinking to myself that uh, maybe i am not made for canadian pr as well so thing is uh instead of uh, paying someone or getting scammed just drop the idea i mean look for some other opportunity so th this is what i wanted to talk to you guys about this is what i wanted you guys to be on the same page with me i wanted you to resonate with it okay because these are the harsh realities uh, at the age of, this is a game for the young blood because uh, the obvious reason is canada needs tax paying people somebody at the age of 29 28 they are going to pay taxes for a longer period of time as compared to people at the age of 40 or 44 okay so like this is simple math calculation and uh, if if the uh, thing is if there will there will be a program for the uh, like over aged people or the middle aged people then i would be the first one to share that news with you guys but currently saskatchewan is the only program and you would need a clb4 in french language this is zalif the card i'm always optimistic